Welcome students to this session on sequencing problems. So we will be covering the sequencing problems uh, which will come under module 5. So let us see what is sequencing problems. What are the different terminologies used in sequencing problems? How the sequencing problems help an operations manager or an operational, operational in charge to you know take a decision regarding see, the operations under his or her control and also how we look at certain techniques or certain mathematical techniques to solve sequencing problems. So we will be covering the basic terminology used in sequencing problems and also we will be using the priority based sequencing technique which we base or which we use for a one machine problem. So we have seen that in an organization the different resources which are available are say human force, materials, machines, money etc. Now there has to be some decisions taken when you are processing some jobs say in a workshop or in a work center. So in organizations, this sequencing problem involves the determination of an optimal order or a sequence, an order or a sequence. Since we are de dealing with operations research here, our objective is to find optimal solutions, right? Optimal solutions, the best possible solutions for a particular problem under consideration. So in sequencing, we are now determining an optimal order or a sequence of performing a series of jobs, jobs which are given or jobs which are known, which are given to a particular work center by a number of facilities. And what are these facilities? These facilities could be say work centers or machines, correct? So the determination of an optimal order or a sequence of performing a series of jobs or tasks by a number of facilities like say work centers or machines so that the objective is to minimize the total time so that the objective is to minimize the total time so that will be the discussions that will be covered in this particular session The sequencing problem involves the determination of an optimal order or sequence of operation or sequence of performing a series of operations or a job by a number of facilities with the objective of minimizing the total elapsed time. So what does it mean? It means this particular sequencing problem which we are going to discuss now involves the determination of an optimal order or a sequence of performing a series of jobs by a number of facilities with the objective of minimizing the total elapsed time. So some terms which have to be now taken care of should be noted here is one is this word optimal, optimal, yes, this optimal order. So the word optimal is important here. So you want to now find out a sequence or an order of a series of jobs which are processed by say, different machines or facilities. What is your objective? Objective is minimizing the total elapsed time. So here your intention is to find out a sequence which will give you an optimal order, an order which will give you the minimum total elapsed time. So in fact what you are doing in a sequencing problem is finding out an order in which these jobs should be performed 
in number of facilities facilities here refer to work centers or machines so that when you use this particular order and find out the total elapsed time total elapsed time you get an optimal solution that is you minimize the total elapsed time next number of machines it refers to the number of service facilities through which a job must pass before it is assumed to be completed so we have now seen what is sequencing sequencing is a determination of an optimal order or a sequence of performing a series of jobs by number of facilities with the objective of minimizing total elapsed time now what are number of machines when i say number of machines it refers to the number of work centers or machines or the facilities which are available to process these jobs so this it refers to the number of service facilities through which a job must pass before it is assumed to be completed next what is processing time processing time refers to the time required for completion of a job on a machine so a job comes into a machine get started and the time taken by the machine to process that job completely that is the end time or the finish time of that particular job so the entire processing time if say i say job a has a processing time of 10 minutes on machine 1 okay then job a once it comes into machine 1 will come out of the machine fully processed after this 10 minutes correct okay? So the processing time of each machine will be known on a particular machine. Correct. The so job one, job one might take say ten minutes of processing on machine A, whereas it may take six minutes of processing on machine B. So the time required for completion of a job on a machine is called the processing time. Now, what is the idle time on a machine? This is the time during which a machine does not have a job to process. so this is the time during which a machine does not have a job to process it is idle it is not processing any job please uh, have a distinction between jobs and machines you are not talking about jobs on one side and machines on the other all these jobs have to be processed on a particular machine so you'll have single machine problems two machine problem three machine problem or more than three machine problem so we'll be covering all that in the subsequent sessions so in this sequencing session in the sequencing problems you might have a one machine problem where there are different jobs to be processed on one machine different jobs to be processed on two machines with a particular order number of jobs to be processed on three machines in a particular order or number of jobs on number of machines more than 3 in a particular order so all the time when the machine is processing a particular job it is called as under process whenever that machine is not processing any work or any job it is called as idle it means the time of processing is zero here it is idle there now what is total elapsed time so we mentioned here total elapsed time we have mentioned here total elapsed time this particular term here this total elapsed time we discussed total elapsed time what is that total elapsed time this total elapsed time is the time interval between starting the first job starting the first job on the first machine please give this in mind the time interval starting that is the time interval between starting the first job on the first machine of the series and completion of the last job on the last machine correct so a particular job will have to be performed or has to be processed on say two different machines a and b it will have a particular processing time on a and particular processing time on b correct and say the order of the machines is a b so job 1 will first go to machine a so the time taken the time taken by all such jobs say from a to say d you have a b c d four jobs and a is the first job in the sequence and d is the last job in the sequence the total elapsed time would be the time that the first job comes into the first machine till the last job that is job d finishes its process on the last machine 
So the time interval between starting the first job on the first machine and completion of the last job on the last machine including the idle times of the machine. In between you might get some idle times of the machine. So including that. So the total time interval between the first job on the first machine to the completion of the last job on the last machine including the idle times of the machine if any. That is termed as total elapsed time. So you will understand it when we solve problems. This is just the theory part of the terminology which you should now be aware of. That is why I am discussing this. When we start solving problems, numericals, you will understand these terms in a much better way. Now, next is the no passing rule. What do you mean by no passing rule? Now, this is the rule of maintaining the order in which the jobs are to be processed on a given machine. I say there are n number of jobs, there are n number of jobs, n could be any number from 1 to say a higher number than 1 and say it is a two machine problem. All these jobs say A to D, as I told you A to D, four, four jobs are there. All these four jobs have to go through two machines, through machines, correct? So, all four jobs will have to go to the, through the two machines, through the two machines with their respective processing times. Now, no passing rule here means the order of the machines when once specified, once specified cannot be changed. So, all the jobs will first go to the two machines are A and B. Uh, say job A, I will say instead of A, B for jobs, I will say jobs 1 to 4. There are 4 jobs, jobs 1 to 4. So, job 1, job 2, job 3, job 4. And there are 2 machines, machine A and machine B. So, all these 4 jobs will go through machine A and machine B in a particular order. And that order will be A, B, which means every job 1, 2, 3, 4 will go through machine A first. And once it is fully processed one at a time on machine A, it will then go to machine B. It cannot go to machine B. It cannot be processed on machine B unless it is completely or fully processed on machine A. So, that is what no passing rule means. If the order of the machines is given as, if the order of the machine is given as A, B, if the order of the machine is given as A, B, then the job has to be processed first on machine A and then on machine B. If the order is given as B A, then the first processing of the job should happen on B and once it is complete on B, then it has, has to go to A. So, throughout, once it is said that the order is A B, then throughout the problem, the order will be A B only. So, that is called as a no passing rule. Once the order is specified as A B, that is machine A first, then machine B second, throughout the problem, it will be so. So, that is the no passing rule. Practically speaking, Say this could be something you can relate it to say, uh, I will give you a uh, example of say uh, printing and binding for example. You print certain manuscripts of some books are under process. First you print and then you bind it as a book, right? So binding cannot happen before printing. So here printing has to happen first then the binding process. Similarly in a bakery for example, if you bake a cake, baking is, pro uh, is say first a will be the baking, B will be the decoration or finally you give a final touch up to that cake no, for just to uh, uh, no, increase its no, appeal to the customers, correct? correct? So, baking would be first, baking will happen first, only when baking is over then the packaging part will come or what you call as the decoration will come on the cake, correct? Similarly, construction of the house and painting for example, so particular order, you cannot change that order, A has to happen first only then B. Uh, B can follow, correct? So, no passing year rule means the rule of maintaining the order in which the jobs are to be processed, in which the jobs are to be processed on a given machine. If the order is A to B, then job has to be processed on machine A first and then on machine B. Let us see some assumptions in sequencing problems. The first assumption is only one job can be processed on a given machine at a time. That is, suppose you have two machines or three machines or even a single machine. So, if you have multiple jobs, two jobs cannot be processed. That is obvious on a particular machine at a time. At a time, only 
one job can be processed on a given machine at a time that is the first assumption in sequencing problems. Second, once a job has begun on a machine, it must be completed before another job can begin on the same machine. That is, once a job has begun on a particular machine and it takes its processing time and gets completed. So, another job can begin on the same machine only after the previous job that has begun has been completed fully, taking its processing time. So, once a job begins on a machine, it must be fully processed or it must be completed before another job, that is the job that is next in the sequence can come on that particular bridge. So, the second assumption is once a job has begun on a machine, it must be completed before another job can begin on the same machine. Only one machine of each type is available. So, if we have say two different machines available A and B, so only one machine of each type, this is an assumption which means say only one type of machine performing a particular operation is available which means the performing operation of that job has to happen only on that machine. There is no an, another machine or an alternative machine for you to carry out the same operation. Correct? So, only one machine of each type is available. The processing times on different machines are known and are independent of the order in which they are processed. So, the processing times on different machines are already known or are established. The input, the data has been given to you by the, the you know, uh, department. So, the processing times on these different machines are known in advance. So, you know exactly what is the processing time of job 1 on machine A, what is the processing time of job 1 on machine 2 and, and so on. So, all the jobs with their processing times on individual machines are known. So, that assumption we are making that we know the processing times of different machines, they are fully known and they are independent of the order in which they are processed. So, they are independent, they are not dependent on the order in which they are processed. So, this assumption now is very important, see when we know, uh, find out the sequence using techniques, quantitative. So, we, we are using some techniques which we will find out in the subsequent uh, sessions. So, this particular assumption holds, no, becomes very important there. So, the processing times on different machines are known and are independent of the order in which they are processed. The time taken by the job in moving from one machine to another is negligible. So, we are assuming now the first job will start instantaneously, that is the first job will the first job will start in the first machine at zero point of time and will take its processing time and also the time taken by the job in moving from one machine to another that is the time taken for transfer of job from one machine to another machine. For example, machine A and machine B may be at different work centers at different uh, maybe you know, nearby but in different locations. So, what happens we have seen that one job can take uh, one machine can take only one job at a time. So, the so first machine, say machine A completes its processing of a job, uh, a job 1. So, job 1 now has to go to machine 2. So, the transfer time of job 1 from machine A to machine 2, we are not considering. We are treating it as negligible. So, we are not considering that. That is another assumption in sequencing problems. The time taken by the job in getting transferred from one machine to another or in moving from one machine to another is not taken into account or is treated as negligible. All jobs are known and are ready for processing before the period under consideration starts. All the jobs are known and are ready for processing. So, we know all the jobs very clearly, what are the jobs to be done. The processing times we have already discussed in the previous one of the previous assumptions, processing times are known and also the jobs are exactly ready for processing. That means, no wastage of time. Once machine A is available, the jobs will have to be loaded into the machine for processing, no waiting there. The jobs are ready, once the machine is ready for you know, the uh, processing and the jobs are also ready, the job will straight away come and get loaded into the machine, correct? Let us now take an example and see how this priority, priority rules is applied. We will take 
a one machine problem and see how a problem involving processing of n jobs through one machine using priority rules priority rules so the problem given here is the information regarding jobs to be scheduled through one machine is given below you can see the table here so in the table it is given processing times are given there are say seven jobs a b c d e f g processing times in days are given so that is the processing time job a will take four days of processing time on the machine b will take a processing time of 12 and so on so this is the processing time the due date in days are given due date or delivery date here refers to the days by which the jobs have to be delivered to the customer the processing may take four days for job a but its delivery date or due date to the customer is 20 correct so the difference between this 20 and 4 there is a gap of 16 days that is the slack time slack time of that particular job so this slack time here is the difference between the processing time and the due date the processing and the uh, rather the due date minus processing time slack time is equal to due date minus processing time correct you can see for every value here 20 minus 4 16 due date is 30 here for job b processing time is 12 so 30 minus 12 is 18 15 minus 2 is 13 16 minus 11 is 5 18 minus 10 is 8 5 minus 3 is 2 and 9 minus 6 is 3 so processing time is the duration of processing due date is when the customer the, when the job is to be sub given to the or supplied to the customer delivered to the customer and slack time is the difference between due date and the, the due date and processing time okay now you are supposed or you are required now to find out the schedules based on fcfs spt edd and str rules so based on the details given above based on the details given above find the schedules based on fcfs spt edd and str rule also find the mean flow time for each schedule so fcfs here refers to first come first serve whichever jobs comes first to the work center will be scheduled first it's like you're standing in a waiting line in a queue and the person who is at the uh, at the start of the queue beginning of the queue will be served first who is nearest to the counter say in a bank or say in an auditorium where you are now or a railway booking counter of course nowadays it's all online uh, but uh, sometimes you no, know, you do stand in a queue say in the mess in the canteen or say now vaccination for example fcf whoever comes first will be given the first so that, that's how the, the fcfs is uh, no, uh, followed first come whoever comes first will be served first of course okay similarly here also in this particular problem whichever job comes first to do the uh, work center the machine will be processed first spt refers to the shortest processing time the shortest processing time so in this processing time whichever job has the least processing time will be processed first. so in this case c has the least processing time c will be processed first then next least is 3 so f will be processed next and one with the highest processing time for example here it is 12 so b will be processed last because it's having the highest processing time so shortest processing time the job with the shortest processing time will be processed first in edd rule earliest due date uh, rule that job which has the least edd or due date due time which means the one that has to be delivered earliest to the customer which has to be delivered earliest to the customer which is having the least due date that will be processed first in edd in str rule that particular job having the least slack time because it's the most urgent job so you can see here job f for example processing will be over in three days the customer requires it by the end of the fifth day so only two days of slack time is available the minimum slack time is two it's the most urgent job which has which has a minimum uh, what you call waiting time so or the slack time so this two uh, job f will be processed first in the str rule the, uh, the slack time rule correct and also you are found uh, you are required to find the mean flow time for each schedule also you are required to find the mean flow times for each schedule and we'll see how this uh, 
rules will be applied they are all called uh, priority rules or crude rules or priority rules because they are just based on some order which the organization specifies if the organization says spt go by the shortest processing time rule if it says edd earliest due date based on the situation what are the specifications conveyed by the organization you take a decision okay so this is about the priority rules once we start solving the problem we will now solve this particular problem and one by one we will see what is the mean flow time for each of these schedules so let us now start uh, solving this problem the first step is to find out a particular schedule based on the rule specified the first so by fcfs rule i will just write down here by fcfs rule if i take fcfs see the arrival times of the jobs are not given in the problem so you can assume that by fcfs rule the same order which is given in the problem can hold good so what i am doing now is i say the order is a b c d e f g same order a b c d e f g so this will be the order according to the first come first serve rule so because in the problem it is not given which job has come first is not given if suppose in the problem it was given that b has arrived first d has d has arrived second g has come to the work center third and so on a is the last job that has come and your fcfs rule will be based on that arrival pattern but here it is not given like that the arrival uh, the arrival a sequence is not given so what you will do is you will assume that fcfs the problem they have given it as a b c d e f g that itself is the order in which the jobs have arrived so you write fcfs order will be a b c d e f g now next let us see the spt rule shortest processing time rule if i go by spt rule now just look at the table above and find out which is the job with the least processing time the least processing time is with c with c so that is a processing time of 2 days so c will come first here correct once c is over next 3 is the minimum after c that is the next minimum so f the job pertaining to that will be f so c f next job in the sequence will be c f next comes after 3 this 4 4 is a next minimum so a will come next a a will come next after that 6 is the minimum so g will come next just according to the processing times after g it will be e it will be e after e it will be d it will be d and then after d it will be b it will be b so this will be the order sequence according to spt it will be the order c f a g e d b c f a g e d b now let us see according to the earliest due date rule according to the earliest due date rule so that is the edd rule we will see according to the edd rule which is the sequence according to edd rule here look at the table look at the table the earliest due date here which is the minimum here f is the minimum so the earliest due date f f will be the first job in the sequence next after f it is g it is g after g the next one is c c and after that it is d it is d it is d next is after d it is e it is e and after e it is a and after a it is b just look at the table above 
because the minimum year you can see here due date look at the due date row and according to the minimum first place that particular job which has the minimum due date so the edd rule will give you a sequence of f g c d e a b d e a b now let us look at the str rule str rule str rule and the str rule look at the table here according to slack time slack time rule the minimum is f first job that will come in is f because it has the least uh, slack time next again will be g next again will be g and after g it will be d it is d it is d next will be f g d next will be e next will be e and after e it will be c c and after that a and b a and b A and B. So this will be your sequences for the different rules that are given: FCFS, SPT, EDD, and STR. Okay, FCFS, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, S, uh, SPT rule, shortest processing time, CFA, GEDB, and for EDD, it is FGC, DEAB. and for str it will be fgd ecab okay so this will be your sequences for the respective rules which are specified now we have to now construct a table for each one by one for each rule we will now find out what is the total flow time and what is the mean flow time so what is now important for you is this processing times now what you are doing is now you will make a table and arrange this particular table in the form of this particular sequence so in fcfs rule job a will come into the machine at zero point of time and will get processed in four days so the end in time of a will be zero out time will be four the in time in b will be this four plus this 12 out time will be 4 plus 12 16 the in time for job c will be 16 out time will be 16 plus 2 18 and so on so we will come to know when you look at the uh, the solution okay we'll in the next slide we will see the uh, how you arrive at the mean flow rate so you can see here the fcfs schedule is a b c d e f g we have established that see the table here you can see here the in and times of each jobs are given here for each job for each job a b c d in that particular order this particular order we have based this on the same order that we have got through fcfs in time is 0 plus the processing time of a that is 4 according to the original table now next job comes in the machine once a is over a will be out by 4 so b can now come in so at 4 b comes inside takes 12 days of processing so 4 plus 12 is 16 so c gets in at 16 plus 2 days it is 18 d comes in at 18 and it again it takes at 11 days of time of d so it comes out at 29 e will now start at 29 and takes its days 10 days of processing and will get out at 39 f will start at 39 and will take its time of 3 days so it will be out by 42 it will be over by 42 g will now be processed on the machine g will be processed on the machine and it will take its scheduled or its processing time of 6 days and it will be over by 48 so according to fcfs this particular values entire values which i have discussed here now this will be the out times of each jobs so when you add all these out times together 
when you add all the out times you get a total of 196 when you add this 4 plus 16 plus 18 plus 29 plus 39 plus 42 plus 48 let's see here 20 4 plus 6 10 18 27 36 38 plus 8 is 46 carry forward 4 4 plus 4 8 12 15 17 18 and 19 196 it totals to 196 it totals to 196 so this will be your this 196 here total of 196 will be a total flow time but you are required to find out the mean flow rate there are seven jobs here you can see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this 196 divided by 7 will give you 28 days so this is the mean flow rate of this particular problem when you are using FCFS method when you are using FCFS method so in this particular problem by FCFS method you get a mean flow rate of 28 days a mean flow rate of 28 days okay now let us now look at the next rule SPT rule let's look at the SPT rule now so the shortest post processing time schedule was CFAGEDB the SPT rule shortest processing time rule was CFAGEDB GEDB and similarly when I put this particular job in this particular sequence C F A G E D B C becomes the first job so it comes in at 0 and the proce processing time according to the original schedule the processing time will not change we have seen that in one of the assumptions the sequence may change of the jobs but the processing times will not change of the job it will be the same whatever sequence C is whether it is the first job or the last job whatever processing time is allotted, allotted to it whatever processing time it will take on the machine the same thing will hold good for any uh, any particular order any particular space in that particular sequence so accordingly zero it comes c comes in at zero takes its two days of processing time so zero plus two zero plus two then f comes into the machine at two finishes at five a gets processed at five finishes at 9 G gets processed at 9 finishes at 15 E gets processed at 15 finishes at 25 D will get processed at 25 and it will take its 11 days of time so it will be finished by 36 and then at 36 B will enter the machine and B will take its 12 days of time so it will end up at 48 you can see 48 here by SPT rule also the total it will be 48 only this is a one machine problem so when you add all the processing times of all machines processing times of all machine irrespective of the uh, schedule your final answer final total flow time the flow will be 48 only from first job to the last 48 only whatever order you place because there is no gap in between you are starting at 0 and adding up all the processing times right you add up all the processing times you get 48 days Correct. So the shorter SPT rule also here, based on the sequence C F A G E D B, 48 is the flow time, and the mean flow time here will be 140 divided by 7. Similarly, as you have done in the previous problem, when you add up all this, when you add up all this, you get 140. 8 plus 6, 14. 19, 24, 33, 38 plus 2, 40. Carry forward 4, 4 plus 4, 8, 11, 13, and 14. 140 and there are seven jobs so the mean flow rate will be 140 by 7 is equal to 20 days previously you got for fcfs for fcfs you got a mean flow time of 28 days mean flow time or mean flow rate or mean flow time of 20 day 28 days mean flow time of 28 days here you get a time of 20 days here you get a time of 20 days mean flow time of 20 days mean flow time of 20 days this is the shortest processing time rule based on shorter processing time 
you get a mean flow time of 20 days whereas in FCFS you got a mean flow time of 28 days. Here in SPT you get 20 days. Now the earliest due date schedule was established as FGC DEAB. Now similarly according to this sequence again taking their individual processing times into account this will be your table. So I think now by this time you will understood how now this in and out times are arrived at 0 f starts at 0 takes its 3 days of processing time next job in the sequence will begin at 3 will take its processing time of 6 days and finish at 9 next comes 9 will take its processing time of 2 days so it will end at 11 next job will start processing at 11 and will take its 11 days of time finish at 22 E will start at 22, will take its 10 days of processing time and finish at 32. A will start at 32 and will take its 4 days of time of processing and will finish at 36 and B will start at 36 and end up at 48. At the end of the 48th day, your EDD rule, your total flow time here also according to EDD rule will be 48 days. So again, when you take the cumulative of it, take the cumulative of it we get 161. Just look at it. 9 plus 3, 12, 13, 15, 17, 23 plus 8, 31, 3 carry forward, 4 plus 3, 7, 10, 13, 15, 16, 161. Total is 161. When you divide that by 7, you get 23 days. You get 23 days. So, this is the mean flow time here is, the mean flow time is, or the mean flow time is 161 divided by 7. It is equal to 23 days by EDD rule. By FCFS, you got mean flow time as 28 days. SPT rule, the mean flow time was 20 days. And now by EDD schedule, it is 23 days. According to the slack time rule, the schedule was FGD ECAB. So again construct the table according to F, G, D, E, C, A, B, the total time will come to 48. By STR rule it will come to 48. So your total time here will be when you add all this, when you add all this total time will be 178, mean flow rate here will be 178 by 7, you can just check here. 9 plus 3, 12, 14, 20, 28, 4 plus 2, 6, 9, 12, 15 and 17. So, 178 by 7 is 25.43 days. Now, these hours could be, you know, working hours per day. So, this decimal can be equated to number of working hours. So, this decimal you can retain and convert it into the number of working hours and, you know, keep it as it is, okay. Now, suppose it was a, uh, uh, in mean, mean flow time, when we talk about mean flow time, this 25 point, uh, 4, 3 days here represent the mean. When you compare all this, all the 4 schedules now, 1 by 1. In FCFS, you got a mean flow time of 28 days. In SPT, you got a mean flow time of 20. In STR, 25.43 and EDD, 23. So, now based on this, you can now make a selection of which particular rule you will prefer. Okay. Here is a summary of the mean flow time, the mean flow times for the four uh, rules. So, FCFS 28, SPT 20, EDD 23 and STR 25.43. So, based on this, if the company asks, in this problem it is not asked, but find out which one to select, obviously you will select this one. SPT rule because it gives a minimum flow time, a minimum flow time of 20 days, a minimum flow time of 20 days. So, the, that particular sequence which will give you the minimum flow time is usually preferred, okay, is usually preferred because it gives the least mean flow time, correct, the least mean flow time. So, SP, uh, the SPT rule, the SPT rule gives the 
best results in terms of the mean flow time. So you can select SPT if it is asked out of this which is the best you can say the mean flow time of using SPT rule is the minimum. So SPT rule is the most preferred one. So in this particular problem uh, you have found out the sequence using the given priority rules you have found out the flow times and the average flow times and also seen how these flow times will influence you to take a decision on which particular priority rule to be select. Okay. So in our subsequent sessions we will discuss about say two machine problems where there are many jobs involved two machines and subsequently we will also discuss about three machine problems M machines N jobs and also graphical method in due course of time. Thank you.